Welcome to Digital Asset News, to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and yeah, bring them out in bite-sized pieces. So today, we're gonna do something a little different. Uh, we've already talked about uh, the market. Markets are fine, functioning. There's no really fundamental changes. Uh, there's only volatility, which is normal for us. So uh, that is the, uh, the uh, mainstay of crypto. But I wanna to talk to you about what brought you here, which was the title, which was, I'm broke. And it's true, I'm broke. Uh, I woke up today, and there was a nice little message on my, uh, I got a text message uh, alert. It says, you are overdrawing your account. I'm like, huh, it's interesting. What the heck happened? And then I took a look at the account and it was a little bit positive because what it does for my bank account, it's just, if I get overdrawn, it takes money from my credit card. I was like, shoot, it's crazy. And uh, I just must've been busy. Still in Houston, we're still in this uh, investment property, going through the motions, found a busted pipe. So that's why we're still here. But uh, I was looking at the bank account. I'm like, what the heck happened? And then I realized, like, oh, Rob, you've been buying a boatload of crypto every single day because you've dollar cost average your brains out uh, for this entire year. And actually, I've been dollar cost averaging since 2018. So I've just been increasing my positions as time has gone on, as, there, as there's been dips, and uh, I haven't really looked back. So the thing was, I was like, shoot, I mean, I've really, you know, uh, spent a lot of, uh, of money. And I thought about it, and I really thought about it. I go, well, is that so much a bad thing to get out of the fiat position and into the cryptocurrency position? And uh, no, it's not a bad, it's, I mean, for me, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but for me, this totally makes sense. And this is why I'm really into assets. I'm into you know houses and land and, and businesses and, uh, and digital assets because I don't really see, there is a need for money, obviously, but uh, I just don't, uh, you know, put a big premium on it. So that's going to bring me to like a little, a couple of points I want to share with you today. So first of all, uh, why did I do this? Why did I do so much of this? Well, it's because the four-year cycles, which I'm always talking about, um, I think that we are, uh, if you just look back in the, the last bull run, we are, see this all-time high, 19.5. See, it says January 2017 or 2017, 2017. See where it's just kind of like flat? That's pretty much where we're at right now. We are at that point uh, again in 2021. So I think right here is where I want to accumulate. So if I run out of money, um, it's okay. First of all, I just, you know, I go to my other business account and I, I can just do an owner's draw and put it over there. Or I do something else or not, one of my other business accounts and, and, and pull money from there. And uh it's not a big thing uh, because you know I have other assets out there that I can I can pull money from. So I think right now for me it only makes sense to get out of fiat because uh, the purchasing power of fiat is going down. So that is the the really the, the first part. And when you talk about dollar cost averaging, I've been doing this for a while when it's been super boring and flat, which is what just really was uh, before this, but it's still in my opinion still very flat. So. You have to understand, um, we've been in this upward channel, but then things have been going sideways, especially like with the Cardano, uh, with Ethereum, actually been going a little bit sideways. Uh, things are, you know, looking up for us as time has gone on. And then you have to remember too, is that everything that, that we've been doing so far uh, has been matching up pretty much with the 2017 bull run. So Take a look at this. This was just what we talked about. Here's 2016, where we have all these different pullbacks. You know, we would drop. We just dropped uh, massively just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the same thing is going on again. This was uh, from early 2021. Remember, in January, we had a little bit of a, of a pullback of 20 percent and a pullback of 18 percent. Just a couple of weeks ago, it was like what 15, 20 percent. So it's the same thing uh, repeating itself again and again. And again, so <clears throat> when I talk about like I'm broke fiat wise, it's for some people it's kind of scary. But uh, if you really take a step back and go, well, what has fiat really been doing for me? I mean, it allows me to buy things. I mean, definitely I, I need them. But as time has gone on, I believe that this is going to happen. This is going to happen more, and it's the the purchasing power of what you actually get. So think of it this way. Back in March, well, it's March 2021, but back in March of 2020, Bitcoin was just was 5,000, you know? So what could you get with 5,000? Well, you can get a used Honda, I guess, 
Um, and that's one thing. But now if you had one Bitcoin, what can you buy? Uh, pretty good Tesla, <laughs> if you think about it, or a really super cheap uh, house somewhere in, I don't know, what, not in LA. I'm just uh, saying like uh, maybe a very, well, a great down payment, we would say. So when we take a look at this for like, you know, the purchasing power of what's going on, you can continue to stay in fiat or I can continue to stay in fiat, but I look at them like, why would I do that? Because all the money that I have is going to start to erode. I can only buy so many things. And then we've got another big problem, uh, which is the, uh, the different uh, stimulus package that has been uh, passed means that there's, we're going to flood the market with even more dollars, which means that the purchasing power is going to go down even more. So this was so not only talking about uh, the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar that has gone down from 1913 uh, all the way to the present. So remember when your grandparents would tell you, I used to buy, I could buy a house for a nickel or whatever they would say. And uh, well, they'd say, I buy a loaf of bread for a nickel, right? And they were right. They could, they could do it because the purchasing power was pretty good. But of course, that same nickel buys absolutely nothing. And that's why like a nickel today was worth a dollar back in 1913. And then this was a nice little graph. 1971 is when uh, Richard Nixon took us off uh, the gold standard. And then, of course, the, per the purchasing power of the dollar went way down. And of course, uh, the money printers went way up. And before you knew it, this little red line here, this is the currency in circulation. So the more currency that is in circulation, it dilutes the product itself. And of course, the purchasing power goes down. And that's pretty much matches up with the same thing over here. So the problem I see is not only about the purchasing power going down, but is the dilution of the dollar that is happening. And just so you know, this bottom right hand corner, as of February 10th, 2021, there was 2.05 trillion worth of Federal Reserve notes in circulation. And this right here is like 2010, 12, somewhere around there. It was only 800 billion. And look at the purchasing power of the dollar right there. So, and this was actually uh, just taken right from the federalreserve.gov. So, when I take a look at this, right, and uh, I don't know if you're like me, uh, if your bank account has been you know, pretty low for quite some time uh, because your personal bank account you just take that money and just put it in the cryptocurrency and then you just watch it go up. Now, this was a, this would have been a pretty bad strategy uh, in 2017 when we had the parabolic bull run go from, uh, let me just bring that up real quick. If you would have right here where it starts to you know, really go up around June, July, August, and then just sort of stick everything in there and went all the way up, it would have been okay. But the thing is, is when do you get out? because a lot of people, myself included, never got out. So the things that I'm doing now is when I'm you know, getting out of these positions, I'm getting out of fiat and getting into cryptocurrency. Uh, right now, it just makes sense because I see there's so many new roads being put in. There are so much interest into not just Bitcoin, but uh, we just did a story about uh, Chili's, uh, that whole thing with um, sports, sports teams and, and what they're doing there. I mean, Theta, and smart contracts and Cardano and uh, you know oracles like Chainlink. I mean, just the list goes on and on and on. V Chain and and what they're tracking. So all these things that are happening. This is like for me, it is the best time to get out of fiat and get into cryptocurrency. Now there's going to come a point when everything that just goes up, you're going to have to get out. Uh, I'm going to have to get out uh, of these positions because uh, there's what goes up will inevitably come down, but. I see a lot of great things happening uh, very soon. So this is the last thing I'll, I'll talk about here, which is uh, I did a video and I talked about my exit strategy where once I get to, to certain points or certain positions, I will start cashing, as I say, cashing out. So people will say, well, why do you want to get back into cash when you just talked about how the purchasing power uh, didn't work out? Well, it's because of this. It's because I can't pay for uh, houses I want to buy in cryptocurrency yet. I can't uh, fund my uh, Amazon FBA business with Bitcoin yet. I can't purchase land with you know, Dogecoin yet. So I have to at some point cash out and then immediately get into these assets 
because that for me is is, is what it's going to be. Now, uh, this video I talked about 10% will be in cash just because it's good to keep on the sidelines, especially things like this with the investment properties. 25% will go into uh, stable coins, 50% land, 20% into uh, real estate, 10% will go back into my Amazon business, 15% will stay into uh, staking. I think staking is one of the biggest opportunities if besides non-fungible tokens, which I really don't understand, so I don't really get into those, but 15% uh, for staking. And I'm talking about Theta, Cardano, Ethereum, and Polkadot, to name a few, or to, well, to name the majority, is what I will definitely be staying in anyhow. And then 5% goes to my uh, iTrust uh, because I can park my money there uh, and it's tax-free when I want to take it out at 59 and a half years old. And all the different uh, cryptos like Polkadot and Ethereum, I'll, in quarter two, I'll be able to stake. And for whatever I gain from that, as far as staking, uh, will be tax-free on top of whatever everything uh, evaluates or raises to or appreciates to, excuse me. So these are the things that I still want to do. And um, like we talked about in the price predictions, uh, I was super conservative about what was going on uh, as far as like the actual prices. Like for Bitcoin, I still have it at 150K. And this was this is the price prediction on January 7th. And I want to see, I, I want you to, sh I want to show you which ones are overperforming and which ones are underperforming in my opinion. Uh, Ethereum back then on January 7th was 1.1200, 1, not too bad. Chainlink was 17, Cardano 32 cents. Theta was $2, Celsius was six bucks. Pretty good. Stellar was 33 cents, Polkadot 10, Tezos 265, EOS 340, VeChain was, was 3 cents, Uniswap was $6.60, crazy. Voyager was only 29 cents. Voyager, 29 cents. Ave 122 and Bitcoin Cash 41. And XRP, I still own it, but I don't know what's going to go on with that SEC case. So fast forward, uh, this is just, you know, just a month and a half later, a month and a week later, uh, we had Bitcoin at 55. So it went from 38 to 55. Great performer. Ethereum underperformed. It went from 1.2 to 1.9. And right now it's about 1.7. I mean, just totally underperforming, in my opinion. Chainlink went from 17 and it doubled to 35. And I had to actually update my price prediction. I think it's going to go between 35 and 55. I'd already hit 35. So obviously, Cardano uh, went from, what was it? Uh, 32 cents to 93 cents. Pretty good. Then it went to $1.40. Now it's down to like $1.18. Still pretty good. Theta is the one that went from, jeez, $2 to $3.77. And now it's sitting around seven bucks. That is massively overperformed, and I'm glad I got it. And here's one that I think really is underperforming. Celsius went from six bucks on January 7th to 565 on February 19th, and now it's like March 11th, 12th, 13th, somewhere around there, and it's a little bit lower than that. So Celsius underperforming in my opinion. Stellar did pretty well. Stellar went from 33 cents to 51 cents, so not too bad. Polkadot massive improvement, uh, ten dollars. $10 a polka dot, and then it was $34, 10 to 34, pretty good. Tezos, VeChain, EOS didn't really do so hot. Uniswap, look at this one. Uniswap went from $6.60 to 20 bucks. And now, and that's in February 19th. And now I think it's even, it's, it's higher than that. Voyager, five, it went from 29 cents right here to $5 in a month and a half. And then it hit an all-time high of seven. Now it's down to like 565. So kind of stagnant, not so great. And Aave and Bitcoin Cash just did okay. So when we talk about like all these things that are going, and this was just in a month time frame, right? Now we're in March and Bitcoin is still around that. It's just kind of going sideways. That's why I've been putting so much money into cryptocurrency. Because why? Because it's boring. When things are moving sideways, this is when I invest because I'm like, it can only go up. I'm not going to invest in the Chili's after it went up, went up 100%. That is just, for me, that is stupid. But as things are moving sideways, this is the time when it's not too sexy to get in the game and go, you know what? I want to get in there because no one's really paying attention and it's just dull and that is it. So again, I could keep my, I mean, my value into fiat. 
and I could let my bank account flourish, what what does that do for me? I, I don't, there's, there's no appreciation. The checking account gets, I don't even think it gets a, any interest, like maybe 0.04% or something stupid like that. So why would I put in cryptocurrency right now when this is the time to do it? All right, so that's a question for you to answer for yourself. But that's it for today. I just wanna just tell you what's going on. I'm out of money, but I'm doing okay with cryptocurrency and I will continue to put money in the cryptocurrency because for me, this is the time. But there is going to come a time when I have to get out and that is the time for my exit strategy. I've already talked about that. I'll link that video at the end. And that is it for today. So if you like that video, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It always helps the channel. Also consider subscribing. There's a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive and uh, that would be great if you could. Also, I want to put uh, two more videos on your left and right, uh, the price prediction and also exit strategy. I'll put those up. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. 